So I'm going to show you guys our typical summer setup. On the upper, we have a bug jacket, the original bug jacket. And then underneath, we have these dry pants, which have proved to be essential. So you put them on with dry socks. With dry socks underneath to keep your feet warm when you're wading, wading up rivers or on those cold days. Sometimes I don't wear pants underneath, it depends on how hot it is. And you put neoprene socks over top. shoes over there. Nope, the neoprene gives you another layer of insulation and also protects any pressure points from your shoe on your dry pants to stop any leaks. And then you always have your rain jacket close by because it can rain at any moment, even on a sunny day like this. Our team had another day of big lake paddling ahead of us as we worked our way up at Titamagan Lake towards the height of land. With weather on our side, our attention shifted to our fishing rods with the hopes of catching a few lake trout for lunch. Oh man, she's shaking her head and I don't like it. I don't know how well I have her hooked. You can get this one being landed on film, but you can see it was a good sized catch. Four hours. Time for some lunch, eh? I say. It ain't gonna be bad, I'll tell you that. You're using a fork like a real man. Yeah. He's a gentleman. The rest of us are animals. Yeah. First fish fire of the trip. One of many. We're just before the height of land, just getting up to Mole Lake, and uh, this seems to be some sort of cabin belonging to a French person of sorts. What else is there? Good picture here. There's you know, some crabs. It's a classic tree. Tree in the north with a bunch of shit on it. Once we made it to the top of Atatamagan Lake, the headwaters petered out into flooded alders, which seemed to be the work of beavers damming the stream. We tracked and dragged our canoes up the stream towards the next still water. One, two, three. One, two. 
Dave, what are we looking at in front of us here? This is a pretty big spot for us. Well, this over here is, uh, as on our name says, Teddy Bear Hill. And the hill over to the side of it's a little bit higher, 600 meters. And running it across the top of these hills here is the uh, height of land between the Atlantic watershed and the Arctic watershed, or the Ungava Bay. And that's really exciting for us because we're about a kilometer away from it right now. And that means that we will be going downhill for a little ways after that. We'll be off the lakes and we get to go see what the Tapa River is all about. So that's cool, man. Cool. Yeah, pumped. It's going to be awesome. With this portage marks the first big milestone of the expedition. We were officially portaging out of Labrador into Quebec as we crossed the Laurentian Divide into the Arctic watershed. I've seen the pot that full before. <laughs> so how are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good today. Today we crossed the height of land, which is pretty sweet. What does that mean for the trip? It means it's all downhill, as Dave says, until it's not when we start going back towards the next height of land. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're over all the big lakes and every day we're distancing ourselves from civilization. And so we thought we'd celebrate tonight with some sips of rum. And we have a leftover fish from this afternoon, which makes sense because we probably had about eight pounds of lake drought. You guys saw the fish fry. It was massive. <laughs> Good attempt. Yeah, there's no way. Yep. Raindrops. And then the rain started. Before we could even finish our morning road coffees, we already reached our first set of rapids. After a few more paddle strokes, we reached a second set, and with alder choked shorelines, we could only scud our line from our boats from above. Let's just back paddle our way down, eh? Out of my skin, there's a sailing charm. Never sleep. Draw, draw, draw. Never. Go close to the shore. This set was a little more sporty than the one before. Under my feet, there's a road to walk. Woo! Dirt. Time is my time. That was actually pretty intense. Yeah. Yesterday was our first milestone. We crossed the height of land into Nunavik. Now we are doing a few lake hops to reach the Depa, which will be taken for about 125 kilometers. Yeah, we had a pretty exciting morning this morning though. Yes, we, right off the bat, we hit a few 
We just sent it on, on a couple of class twos. It's pretty rocky, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. But these boats have already proved to be the right tool for the job out here. We just bounce off stuff sometimes. But it's no big deal. You can tell here, the mountainous terrain that we're in, the trees are starting to sparse out a bit as we make our way to the barren lands. Chaz, what are the kids looking at here? So we pulled up on this old, old river and it's a washout from this mountain right here. And the colors are interesting. You can tell there's a lot of iron in this old, old rock. And as it erodes, the iron becomes exposed to oxygen and it oxidizes, creating this like reddish hue on everything. And as it oxidizes, it precipitates, which it becomes a solid. So in a lot of the sediment here, there's floating um, iron precipitate. And you can tell it that because it's really cloudy and kind of red in the water right here. You can tell it one time it just flowed through here. Yeah, it's the first time we're seeing this though, so the topography and terrain is changing as we continue down this route, which is pretty cool. Do you want to see some variation out there? Exactly. All right, so we made it to our campsite here on day five. And we actually are staying at a camp that has obviously been camped at before. A lot less wet than some of our other sites that we've had. Nice cleared out spot. And we're gonna go out fishing for a little while because we actually made pretty good time today. Made it to our site for three o'clock. And so we've got the rest of the afternoon to kind of hang out and enjoy. And uh, yeah, now time to go enjoy some fishing and hopefully get some more fish for tonight. Let's just stick them on. It's okay. not, it's not overthink it. Okay. We'll just throw them on right, right there. So when the decks are on. Perfect. What are we doing right now? Hey, we're uh, taking these fancy stickers that the uh, Royal Canadian Geographical Society gave to us, and we're gonna get them onto our boat here. It's uh, been on the to-do list for a little while, but uh, boats have been wet pretty much non-stop since we got here. What can you do? What can you do? It's looking pretty good. Thanks RCGS for helping us with our expedition across Labrador. Thank you. So earlier today when I was waiting up river, I, I guess I slipped and I got a little cut in my dry pants and my foot got soaked. So now we're just doing a quick fix because it's, it's too wet to, to add the aqua seal. So we're adding tenacious tape to each side to hopefully last the day. But I am noticing the sides aren't really sticking that well. No, they're not. I think it's that material. It's just wet, yeah. It's not, um, try, why don't we turn it inside out and try the other side? Moisture. Moisture's the enemy. Come on, Tenacious. Yeah. It's in the name. It's not being that tenacious right now. Yeah. Well, we could try the Aqua Seal and see how that that sets. 
Can you set in a moist environment? Uh, yeah, I might be able to. Let's give it a try and see. Uh... I'll give it a try. Let that sit overnight. Good as new. Thanks, man. No worries. We finally have some tailwinds. So we're just enjoying ourselves. Our friends over here have set up a, t a sail. How's the sail working out? Oh buddy, we're going good. You're cooking. We haven't seen anyone out here at all, but we have seen a couple cabins along the route. So along the shores over here, we actually just saw another one that actually looks like a pretty nice homestead. Or a snowmobile. Oh, true. Definitely a snowmobile. The lifestyle out here is definitely more winter oriented. I know, that blows my mind, but like once you kind of get your head around it, it's like, kind of makes sense. Alright, so we've had a pretty good day so far today. A lot. We've been crushing distance. We're almost at 15 kilometers for the day. I don't know exactly what time we're at, but just a lot of moving water and actually a lot of tailwinds, which is quite the treat. But uh, we've had a lot of these swifts coming up and just really cool that now we're actually paddling the Depaw River. The headwaters of the Depaw River has many short river sections. With the strong current in these narrows and the tailwind on the lakes, we were able to clip along at a very respectable pace. This made reaching our daily distance quota easy work. So we've been absolutely crushing lake distance today. And we're probably sitting at around 30 kilometers right now, and it's probably like, what, do you, what time do you think it is, like four? It's mid-afternoon sometime. Um, but we've been crushing distance, so we just kind of pulled over at a site after a set of rapids here, and uh, we're just doing some casts, stretching the legs, and getting ready before we crush one more lake, which is about 10 kilometers. And then that's gonna put us actually at our marker for day 10, which means that since it's day six right now, we're actually four days ahead of schedule, which would be friggin' awesome. Uh, because as we get further on into this trip, there's a lot of variables that we just don't know how long things are gonna take. So having this extra time as a buffer means that when we're on like a really big portage day or something like that, we don't have to feel bad about only doing like 10 kilometers or five kilometers in the day, depending on how, how difficult it is. So this is kind of setting us up really well for further on in the trip. Today was actually gorgeous. No, bare, like little spats of rain here and there, but not too bad. Um, wind has been behind our back for the most part, which is a treat. And no fish, unfortunately. But other than that, like the there's been no sun out really. It's just been kind of overcast like this, which is kind of nice. Like the sun really takes it out of you when you're paddling. So got the solar panels out, charging our Sherpa 100 battery unit which we've been using to charge the cannon, and we actually tried to uh, charge the drone battery as well, and it seems to have worked. Even on a cloudy day like today, we got 6% juice inside the, inside this little guy right here. See, there's actually like a AC plug on it, which is pretty awesome. All right, we are out here on Lac La Porte. Noah's got a fish. Ah. Uh... Uh, is it a bike? It's a pike. <laughs> pike! God damn it. Oh, I thought you were a little brookie.
Noah's got another fish on. And it's a pike. Pike! Another one, man. God damn it. <laughs> another yeah. fish. Maybe a little bigger. Hopefully a little bigger. We're done with the snot rockets. A little bit more decent of a size. <laughs> do you want to deal with them? No, I'm good. Nice. Give him a kiss. All right, so we are at the Montagnus Club Jammin Camp on Jammin Lake. You guys want to sleep here tonight? You want a cabin, man. You said you wanted to sleep, you wanted a cabin. I don't know if I wanted it this bad. This is the most cabin I've ever run up there. Oh, another bottle of booze, empty. Oh my god. That's what they're using up here for something. Your I wonder if that's a salmon rig. I feel like that would be salmon bait. I just, or maybe lake trout. There's an ear plug. Sam oh, maybe that's just stuck on there then. Yeah, it is. To protect it. To keep it, yeah. And coffee. <laughs> wow. It's decaf. No, oh, uh, useless brown water. Oh, that's some thermal. This fishing rig is really interesting though. Yeah. Look. There's whales in here, man. They're jigging with it if it's on a stick like them. Yeah. yeah. What if this is for ice fishing? Oh, true. Right. That's a monster hook. What's in here? What do they know? What do they know that we don't? Probably a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we just said out. Somebody out there is like, I got a camp out on Jammin' Lake. Whoa, this thing's like pristine. What are they catching in this lake? Let's Holy see. smokes. Alright, yeah, somebody's still using it. Yeah, this yeah. is clean. Somebody flies in here. Absolutely. Yeah, they're catching some monsters in here. It's nuts. We have to do it. Soon. Maybe troll back to the site. Deep jigs. <laughs> Deep jigs. Just swamp ass and just be uncomfortable in the bow and just a new level of like so uncomfortable. I wanted anything other than be sitting in that boat. Sweet release of death. 